Okay, class, so we're now in chapter seven, and it has to do with cost, volume, profit analysis, or what's commonly known as CVP. And this is after we changed gears in chapter six. Chapter six, we went from talking in chapters one through five about cost accounting, and now we're in the decision-making portion of managerial accounting. And chapter six, we started with the idea of cost behaviors, how we could basically find patterns of cost behaviors, and those patterns would be variable, fixed, or mixed, and we could change the mixed costs into the fixed and variable portions of the cost. So now we're looking at CVP, which is going to look at how the changes in cost, sales price, and volume is going to affect the profit. Okay, so cost, volume, profit analysis is a powerful tool. It helps management make decisions and make predictions, okay? So one of the reasons that students sometimes like managerial accounting is it's more of a decision-making process and not so much of just creating financial statements like financial accounting was. So managerial accounting gets into this decision-making and making predictions. So here we're going to use CVP analysis. And just as it indicates, it has to do with cost, volume, and profit. We're gonna determine the sales volume needed to break even and to earn a targeted profit. That's gonna be one of the first things we do as we look at CVP analysis. Okay, so uh, a little example will be that we will look at the sales price, the volume, the variable cost, the fixed cost, and the profit for a small business that is called K's posters, okay? So this is gonna be K's posters will be our example. Now, before we get started, we're going to make certain assumptions. First of all, we're going to assume that the sales price remains constant throughout the relevant range. And we talked about relevant range and that simply means the amount of volume where the fixed total fixed cost stays the same and the variable cost per unit stays the same. And that's a reference back to chapter six. Again, we're going to assume that we can classify costs as being either variable or being fixed. We're gonna assume that the inventory levels do not change. Okay, so again, chapter six, remember that we had absorption costing and variable costing where that made a difference. But here we're just saying the inventory levels are not changing. And we're gonna assume that the product mix stays constant. The product mix is how much you sell of one product versus how much you sell of another product. So that's also gonna remain constant when we do our calculations. So a contribution margin is going to be the excess of the total sales revenue over the total variable expenses. And a contribution margin can also be the excess of the selling price on a per unit basis over the variable cost on a per unit basis. So again, it's the sales minus variable expenses gives you your contribution margin. And you can either do it in total or you can do it on a per unit basis. Now, when we talk about variable costs, we're talking about all variable costs, both the product variable costs and the period variable costs. So they're all included when we do a contribution margin Now, here's Kay's poster. She's selling the poster for $35. Her variable costs are $21. <clears throat> and then she has fixed costs at $7,000. The relevant range, zero to 2,000 posters. Okay, so she's selling 550 posters. That's within the range. So everything is set to go. 
All right, so if you look now at the total sales revenue, remember we can do it in total or per unit. The total sales revenue is the number of posters times the sales price. The variable costs, which we were given at $21 per poster times the number of posters sold gives us this contribution margin. What exactly is a contribution margin? It's the amount that contributes to the fixed cost, and then whatever's left over becomes the operating income. Okay, so our contribution margin is 7,700. Our fixed cost is 7,000, and our operating income is $700. If you look at the unit contribution margin, that will be the sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit, and this will give you your contribution margin per unit. And we'll use this for a number of different calculations. Again, Kay earns $14 every time she sells a poster. That can be used either to pay off the fixed expenses, and then once they're paid off, it goes towards earning a profit. Another way of looking at the contribution margin is the contribution margin ratio. And that's simply going to be equal to the contribution margin divided by the sales price, okay? So our contribution margin divided by our sales price gives us a percentage, and that percentage is the contribution margin ratio. And you can either do it on a per unit basis or you can do it in total like we did before. And these numbers come from the calculation in that previous slide. All right, so now we can calculate something that's extremely important to businesses. One of the first things you wanna know is what is the break even point? In other words, how many posters does K have to sell just to break even? And so the idea here is the sales level at which operating income is zero or your total revenue equals your total expenses. When the sales uh, level is below break even, then you have a loss. When the sales are above break even, you have a profit. So that seems pretty basic, but you get the idea. Now there's three ways of calculating the break even, the income statement approach, the shortcut method using the contribution margin, or the shortcut method using the contribution margin ratio. So these are the two that we're gonna use most. The income statement approach is kind of too much work to do. The shortcut method is quicker and in that sense, easier to use. Well, here's the income statement approach, which you may have to do on a homework question. And you can always do use this one. It's just much more cumbersome. That just says that the sales revenue minus the variable expenses minus the fixed expenses. So this is all the expenses will equal the operating income. And if we're talking about breaking even, we're talking about when the operating income is zero. So in this calculation, we have to know how many units are being sold. So instead of putting a number in there, we put X. Then we solve for X, and it turns out that it's 500 posters, okay? So the income statement approach is just simply setting everything to zero where the number of units becomes X and you have a simple algebraic equation. A much easier way of doing it is if you know the contribution margin ratio, this will give you the break-even point in sales dollars. Okay, so we calculated, if you remember with K, the contribution margin was the $14 and the sales was $35. And so we came up with 40% and 
as our contribution margin ratio. Okay, so the break-even point in sales dollars is 17500 See how much easier it is to use the shortcut over the income statement approach. Now, if you want to know not the dollar amount, but you want to know how many posters, then you use the contribution margin per unit. And in this particular example, we don't want to know what the break-even is. We want to know what the targeted profit is. So the targeted profit for $4,900. In other words, how many posters does K have to sell in order to make $4,900? Well, instead of having zero here for break-even, you use the targeted profit. So it's the fixed expenses or the fixed cost plus the operating income, which you can see is 4,900, divided by the contribution margin per unit will give us the number of posters that K has to sell in order to have $4,900 worth of profit. If I wanted to know the dollar amount in sales, I would have used 40%. Okay, that's the contribution margin ratio. And there's an example of that. So I would have to sell 29,500 of posters in order to earn $4,900 in profit. Okay, so real simple, you can see if we wanna calculate either the break even in sales dollars or number of posters or units, or if we wanna know how many we have to sell to have a profit of $4,900 or what is the amount of sales we have to have in dollars, it's a real simple calculation. And here's the formula. And this one, of course, is for the targeted profit. Okay, now, graphing the cost volume profit relationships. Step one, choose a sales volume, plot the point for the total sales revenue, draw the sales line from the origin through the point. Okay, so we all know that when we talk about graphing, we're talking about the x-axis, the y-axis. This is the origin, so there's going to be a line that represents the revenue. Next, we're going to draw a fixed expense line, which is a horizontal line that intersects the y-axis. Okay, and I have no idea what numbers they're going to use, so just remember that would be step two. These are your fixed costs. And it's a horizontal line because the definition of a fixed cost is it remains the same in total over the relevant range. Then we draw the total expense line, which is the sum of the variable plus the fixed expenses. Okay, so that's going to be something that starts on top of the fixed, and then the variable will go something like this. And of course, it should be a straight line. And then identify the break-even point where it intersects. So there'll be an intersection. And there'll be a regular graph. I'm just scribbling off to the side here. And then you can mark where the operating income is and the operating loss. So let's take a look at this. Here's a nice, neat, tidy graph. Again, step one would have been, we draw this line that goes from the origin and that's the total revenue graph. Step two, we draw the fixed cost. Step three, on top of the fixed cost, we're going to draw the variable cost. And of course, we learned from before, the, all of this area in here represents the total cost. And then now we're going to, because we're graphing for break even, wherever the total cost intersects with the total revenue, okay, so the red line is total revenue, the blue line is total cost, this will be the break even. And of course, the X axis is the break even in volume, and the Y axis is the break even in dollars.
Okay, so you'll have a few graphing problems. It's good to know graphing because you're going to use graphs in all kinds of your business classes. Now, there's something called sensitivity analysis that's extremely useful. Uh, Excel spreadsheets are set up to do complicated what-if analysis, but we need to understand how to do some of the more simpler ones. And even though I'm saying they're simpler, uh, they're probably one of the more difficult things to do from this chapter. So we're going to prepare for increasing costs, pricing pressures, and other changing business conditions. In other words, we have to say, what if something changes? So what if the sales price changes? Okay, it could be pricing pressures. So we have to lower the price, the sales price of our items. What if costs change? So the labor unions, they demand a higher wage, and so the wages go up, or let's just say the cost of the, the item you're selling, maybe some of the raw materials goes up, so there's cost changes. And what if the sales mix changes? Okay, what if you're going to sell more of one product than of another one? Well, then we're going to conduct what is called a sensitivity analysis. Very useful when you're doing business decisions in managerial accounting. Okay, so real quickly, I'll go through these uh, little charts or little uh, images that we have. When you're talking about the break-even point, and the unit contribution margin will be a great way of dis, uh, understanding this. If you look and see if the sales price goes up, contribution, I should say when the sales price goes down, the contribution margin goes down. And typically speaking, the volume would go up to break even. That only makes sense. If your sales price goes down, that makes your contribution margin go down. That means you need more items, a greater volume to break even. If you raise the sales price, your contribution margin goes up, and that means that the volume you need to sell goes down. And that makes sense. So there's an indirect relationship between the sales price and the break-even in volume. When you have changes in the variable costs, the break-even points change. Here you can tell right away by looking at the arrows that you have an indirect re relationship and the higher the variable cost the lower the selling prices reduce unit contribution margin so if the variable costs go up the contribution margin goes down and that means that the number of units you have to sell goes up if the variable costs go down let's say you find a cheaper source of raw materials of labor, whatever, your unit contribution margin goes up and it means you need to sell less items in order to break even. Now, when the fixed cost change, there changes the break even point, it does not change the unit contribution margin, okay? Remember, sales minus variable cost gives you your contribution margin minus your fixed costs gives your operating income. And so notice that because fixed costs are below the contribution margin in the equation, the fixed costs do not change the contribution margin. However, the change in fixed costs does change the volume needed to break even or achieve targeted profits. When fixed costs go up, break even goes up. When fixed costs go down, break even go down. Okay, so sensitivity analysis. Uh, I think there's a video that'll show you how to do the problems for sensitivity analysis, and that should give you a little support. Hard to understand conceptually until you've worked through some problems. Now, the sales mix you can change also. And the sales mix is a combination of products that make up total sales. All else equal, company earns more operating income selling high contribution margin 
products. So that only makes sense. If you have a product that has $10 of contribution margin, okay, that's going to be more profitable than an item that has $8 worth of contribution margin. So when you have a number of items, which most companies will have, you use what's called the weighted average contribution margin. Okay, and that means it's going to weight the contribution margin by the relative number of units that are sold. Again, not as easy to understand conceptually until you see the the actual problem. And so here's a problem. And the key to doing these is to set them up the right way. So this is set up appropriately. And what I'm going to do is this will be the last slide. I don't like to go much over 20 minutes on any of these. But if you notice what it does, it takes each of the products, so the, here's our regular posters. This is the one that Kay's been selling. She's been selling for $35. Here's our contribution margin, okay? And then she decides, well, I'm going to add to this. I'm, I wanna expand my business, so I'm going to also sell large posters. So I'm gonna sell the large posters for $70. My variable cost is 40. Notice I have a larger contribution margin. But the ratio that I'm selling them is I will end up selling, and this is what they mean by number of units in a basket, I will sell five regular posters for every three large posters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ratio, multiply it by the contribution margin. So 14 times five is 70, 30 times three is 90. Add these two together. This will give me my 160, add these two together, five plus three is eight. And so my weighted contribution margin is going to be $20. Okay, now we're gonna use this now to go in and do the break-even analysis for both uh, break-even and the targeted profit analysis when you have sales mixes rather than just one product. Okay, we'll come back and do that in a few minutes.